वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल स्टडी एम एस सी फाइनल केमिस्ट्री यूनिट फोटो केमिस्ट्री डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ रिएक्शन मैकेनिज्म एंड क्लासिफिकेशन द फोटो केमिकल रिएक्शन मैकेनिज्म इज नॉट आइडेंटिकल टू द थर्मल रिएक्शन मैकेनिज्म बिकॉज इन थर्मल रिएक्शन द एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ एनर्जी इज इन कंटिन्यूस मैनर वायल एंड फोटोकेमिकल रिएक्शंस एनर्जी इज सप्लाइड इन अ सिंगल इंस्टॉलमेंट द मेथड्स यूज्ड फॉर द डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ फोटोकेमिकल रिएक्शन मैकेनिज्म आर लार्जली द सेम यूज्ड फॉर ऑर्गेनिक रिएक्शन मैकेनिज्म डिटरमिनेशन व्हिच यू ऑल हैव स्टडीड इन योर अर्लियर क्लासेस दैट इज प्रोडक्ट आइडेंटिफिकेशन आइसोटोप ट्रेसिंग द डिटेक्शन एंड ट्रैपिंग ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट्स and study of stereochemistry and kinetics however in photochemical reaction mechanism determination some more factors are also taken into account these are as follows first is there are a number of products obtained second is when measuring photochemical kinetics there are more variables we can study the effect of the intensity or the wavelength of light on the rate of reaction third is flash photolysis is used for the detection of intermediates by spectra because by this technique we can detect extremely short lived intermediates and the fourth when there are two additional techniques for the study of photochemical reactions that is the first is the study of quantum yield quantum yield phi for a product p that is formed from a photo reaction of an initially excited molecule can be expressed as phi is equal to number of molecules of product formed upon number of quanta of light absorbed product quantum yield is too easier to measure the number of quanta absorbed can be determined by an instrument called actinometer and we have studied quantum yield and actinometry in detail in our earlier lectures well the second additional technique for study of photochemical reaction is the use of emission and absorption spectroscopy from the spectra the presence as well as the energy and lifetime of singlet and triplet excited states can often be calculated now let us begin with the classification part photochemical reactions are the same as the other chemical reactions like addition cleavage rearrangement of molecules etc the actual difference is the way to supply energy the photochemical reaction may be classified on the basis of its course along the potential energy surface as a function of reaction coordinate a photochemical reaction may be of following types first is adiabatic reaction second intermediate case and third is diabetic reaction so here is a figure showing all the three types of cases the first one is showing adiabatic reaction second one is intermediate cases and the third one is showing diabetic reaction so this is the classification of photochemical reactions according to the nature of potential energy surfaces in all the three figures of adiabatic intermediate cases and diabetic reaction the lower curve represents s0 surface and the upper curve represents the excited state surface so let us study these reactions in detail one by one and then we are going to study the major differences between adiabatic reaction and diabetic reaction so that you can understand the topic very easily the first is the adiabatic reaction if the chemical change occurs on the same continuous potential energy surface the reaction is said to be adiabatic you can see and understand this 
this from the first figure that is adiabatic reaction according to this criteria in an adiabatic photochemical reaction the reactants and products must correlate with each other and the transition state the product will be in electronically excited state and may be detected by their luminescence and photochemical properties example is the photo dissociation of small molecules in the vapor state like iodine and the second is the proton transfer in the excited state now next comes the intermediate case in the intermediate case certain fractions of the reacting species may escape deactivation long enough to attain the product configuration you can see here in the diagram and the third one is the diabetic reaction if crossing of potential surface is involved in the photochemical reaction it is said to be diabetic so you can see here the third figure is showing the diabetic reaction the majority of photochemical reactions in condensed phase produce product molecules in the ground state indicating a radiation less transition from the upper to a lower potential energy surface of the system before the chemical reaction is completed the crossover is governed by the laws for the conservation of energy momentum and symmetry and the selection rules for radiationless process are applicable these rules may be influenced by local forces at the point of intersections which include electronic configuration interaction vibronic interaction and magnetic interactions now let us study in uh, detail and understand step by step both the reactions that is adiabatic reaction and diabetic reaction so here you uh, in this way you will be able to understand both the reactions individually also and what are the major differences between both the reactions will be clear to you so let us take them again here one by one and study by taking account the differences also so let us start with the adiabatic reaction upon excitation the reactant r as you can see in the figure is in the new electronic configuration it can move along the potential energy surface all the way to a product still in the excited state in the excited state that product can emit a photon and jump down to a ground state surface and a new product is formed this process where only the excited state surface is involved is known as adiabatic process so you can understand it easily by the help of the figure and a flow chart so in the flow chart you can see there is r a reactant molecule there is absorption of light plus h nu r is the ground state and then on absorption of light excited state r star is formed by thermal motion r star gets converted into p star that is excited state product this excited state product emits a photon and the p final product is formed
Now let us study the case of a diabetic reaction. In diabetic photoreaction, both the excited state potential and ground state potential energy surface are taking part. You can see both the surfaces in, in both the diagrams of adiabatic and diabetic reactions. In the figure it is shown the S0 surface. The lower curve is depicting that and the upper curve is of excited state surface. In diabetic photoreaction, the reactant absorbs photon of light and changes into excited state or star configuration. It begins to travel along the excited state surface until the geometry matches a geometry that is also found on the ground state potential energy surface. This position is known as conical intersection. You can clearly see this in the figure drawn for the diabetic reaction. And at this point, it is possible for the molecule to transfer on to the ground state surface using thermal motion again to promote the reaction leading to the product. So in the diabetic photoreaction, the molecule absorbs light changes to the excited state configuration and then at some point crosses back over to the ground state and generates the product in the ground state. You can understand easily by the help of the flow chart. You can here see the molecule R is in the ground state. It absorbs light, changes to the R star excited state configuration. And then at some point crosses back over to the ground state. And this is radiationless transition. And the final product in the ground state is formed. So at the top, uh, there is clearly mentioned that diabetic reaction there is formation of ground state products and in adiabatic reaction there is formation of excited state products. So by the help of these two figures and the flow charts, I hope now the difference between adiabatic reaction and diabetic reaction is clear to you. Let us revise it again. In the adiabatic reaction, if chemical changes occurs on the same continuous potential energy surface, this is adiabatic reaction. In diabetic reaction, if crossing of potential energy surfaces is involved. In adiabatic reaction, there is formation of excited state product. While in the case of diabetic reaction, there is formation of ground state products. In adiabatic reaction, there is process of luminescence. Luminescence is caused by the emission of photons when an excited atom returns to the ground state. While in diabetic reaction, there is radiationless transition. So I hope now diabetic reaction and adiabatic reaction, you have understood this topic. Thank you so much.